Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, it's time to dive into the first project for the year. Yay! And this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. And looking online, I haven't seen a lot of people doing a project like this. And so, we're going to dive in and build a globe tube amplifier. And globe tubes are these early kind that don't have any mica or anything supporting the tops of them. They later went to the shoulder of the Coke bottle looking tubes. But I wanted to try building an amp using these tubes for a couple of reasons. One is these 47 output tubes are direct heated pentodes. And I know we've all seen direct heated triodes like the 2A3s and the 300Bs, but these are the only direct heated pentodes that, as far as I know, were ever made. And so they were designed for audio output applications and were made in the 1930s, probably early 40s. I'm not, I'd have to go look and see the timeline of them. Same with these 27s. These are the very first indirectly heated tubes. The ones before this were the 26, and they came out with these when they started using AC to power amplifiers. Before that, almost all of them were battery powered. So we're gonna try some of these 27s and these 47s, and I decided I wanna do this higher end kind of build and kind of not spare a lot of expenses so that I can try to get the most that I can out of these ancient tubes. So I got a pair of brand new Hashimoto 5K, 7K output transformers that have ultralinear taps, and that should get everything we can get out of these 47 Pintos, or at least I feel like it. I mean, I looked at the potted ones instead of these regular EI core ones, and they were so much more expensive, I decided that these are going to be good enough. And I believe these are, yep, they're 20 watts. And these tubes are probably 3 or 4 watts. So we've got plenty of headroom here to really get some nice bass and all that out of it. I'm expecting this to probably put out 3, 3.5 watts. It's going to be a you know, pretty low power amplifier. I'm still not 100% sure that these 27 tubes are going to be enough drive for these 47 tubes. It looks like I'm going to need about 32 to 35 volts peak to peak swing going into these. And I may end up having to choke load these to get them or have a plate choke to get these to put out enough power. The other option is I've also got these 56 tubes and I'm planning on initially laying out the amp like this with the 80 rectifier over here and then these two 47s and then these two 27s in the front together like this. And the reason I'm going to do it like this so that if I find out that I don't have enough drive and, you know, even if I maybe swap in these 56s for these 27s. If that's still not enough drive, add these and make this a two-stage drive and amp. And there's still room on each side of these 27s to add these 56s. And honestly, I wouldn't cry if that's what I ended up having to do. I think this looks pretty cool. Um, Going to put our choke here in the front. Going to put our power transformer here in the back. And this isn't the actual power transformer. I still haven't calculated up the power supply and what I'm going to need to drive all the heaters of these tubes. That's one of the problems with these old direct heated tubes is, and even these, they, I believe all of these run on 2.5 volts, which takes a lot of current to run. I believe this is a 5 volt rectifier, just like a modern one. Put our power transformers back here. 
Got a nice audio note volume knob that I can put up here on this side up here. Probably gonna put a just a power switch in the back. And then I found this really cool milliamp meter. It's actually a millivolt meter, but it could be easily set up to use the cathode resistor as a shunt to then power this meter. And this has really got like a you know, early World War II look. Here's a close-up of it. And I just think that looks really cool. The other idea that I'm toying with is maybe trying fixed bias on these output tubes to try to get a little extra power out of them. And we could still use this milliamp meter by putting like a 10 ohm resistor on the cathode and then using it as a shunt for this meter so then we could have the adjusters to set the current draw through these tubes. And that's something I've never done with an SE amp before, but that may be something fun to experiment with this amp. So I think this whole project's gonna be fun. And I think it's gonna be really unique. I also haven't discounted the idea of if with just the 27s, it doesn't have enough drive to operate off of line of making this a preamp needed amplifier, more like a power amplifier. So that's another option too. And then we could possibly make a vintage preamp using these 56 tubes or some 27s or something fun like that. So this is going to be kind of my old retro build using modern design techniques like we may end up using leds to bias these driver tubes and we are definitely going to be wiring these output tubes with ultra linear which nobody had even thought of when these tubes were made so i think that's going to be fun combining like old with newer technology and see what we can get out of these plus these are going to look so cool the thing that really drove me to these 47s, besides them being direct heated pentodes, was in the data sheet, it says, if you see blue glowing all inside the tube, don't worry about it, that's what they're supposed to do. So how cool is that? So hopefully we get some, you know, some nice blue glow stuff going on inside the output tubes and these, all, these are also mesh plate 27s which look awesome. I mean, you can just look right through them and you'll be able to, I don't know, I haven't powered them up, but I'm assuming you'll see stuff glowing inside the, through the mesh and stuff. So anyway, nothing else that's gonna be aesthetically pleasing. Also felt like this was a good project to use this really nice chassis that I bought that the top screws down with countersunk Allen bolts, so the top plate's separate from the sides, and they're all super nicely milled and powder coated. And this is really a you know kind of a high-end finished chassis too. It looks way higher end than like your basic stamp folded Hammond chassis does. So I was going to use it on an earlier project, but I needed more footprint room on the top. But this one, the tubes are small enough and everything where it'll all fit within the confines that it needs to. And I think this is gonna really work out awesome. So anyway, the next video, we're going to start looking at how to design a power supply. And we're gonna go into the PSD2 um, simulation software that I use. And I'll show you how I kind of back into designing the power supply. And I guess I could go over that real quick too. One of the things I've learned is you design an amplifier, or I do, starting at the power cord and ending up at the RCA jacks. So, you know, one of the first things I do is I figure out like what the B plus needs to be and what the current needs are for the high voltage rail of the amplifier. And then the first thing I do is design the power supply. 
and I take into consideration, you know, is this something that needs a lot of filtering? Do I potentially need to put two chokes in it? Is, you know, because it's got a high amperage draw, or do I need to use three chokes like I did on my uh, 300B, but on this we'll probably just use this top mounted choke and another one on the inside with three filter capacitors to really get some clean DC to these tubes. Then the next thing you have to figure out is how do we power up the filaments of all of these? Are we going to use DC? Are we going to use AC? I believe on this amp, because these are only two and a half volt tubes, we're going to try AC to simplify it. And I've heard people saying that AC sounds better. So we're going to give that a try. Like I said, if nothing else, it makes it a lot simpler design. Plus, I don't think the power transformer is going to have the amperage output to deal with these high amperage draw output tubes. So, probably going to have some filament transformers inside the chassis that are going to help deal with that. So, I've got to plan all that out and figure out how I'm going to wire all that. So, that's going to be my next video is working out the power supply stuff, get a power transformer ordered. Hopefully I can find some Hammond transformer that's already made so we don't have to get into some kind of custom made stuff. But if we do, we do. You know, that's just, that's just how things go. So anyway, I hope at least some of you are as excited about this project as I am. I know that, you know, a video about more preamps which we may do one of those kind of in the middle of this just to keep people happy but or i know a lot of you people really want to see the kt88 push pull amp build which the transformers came and they are monsters so this that's going to be a real monster amplifier but that's going to be later this spring and i do want to kind of do some more research before i get into building that like all my amplifiers, I want to try to keep this thing as simple as I possibly can without using a bunch of fancy filtering step network things. Let's just keep this thing as simple as we can. And we probably are going to use my favorite shade plate-to-plate -plate feedback, which is another reason I would like to keep this as a single driver stage. But anyway, more on that soon. Hope you're excited about this, because I certainly am, and I hope you're enjoying my channel. If you are, please subscribe, please like the video, please tell your friends, share in the forums. I'm sure there's a lot of DIYers that would enjoy the content on my channel. And until we get drilling and building on this amp, I'll see you next time for more 47 Tube Amp Fun. Have a great day.